Well, let's take, go back live to Jerusalem and hopefully conclude our chat with Arise Chief Correspondent John Cookson, who's been following uh, the visit of the U.S. Secretary of State to the Middle East there. Uh, John, uh, apologies uh, for all the issues we've had, um, technical issues, but uh, I wonder what was the latest on Mr. Blinken's visit that you can tell us and your assessment of his visit there. Well, hi, Charles. Good to see you. I've been in Ramallah most of the day, and uh, it was a cold, rainy, cloudy, miserable day in uh, Ramallah. And that kind of sums up the mood, I would say, of the Palestinians uh, to the uh, visit by Secretary of State uh, Blinken. They didn't expect much and they didn't get very much, but we knew that already, Charles. There was no great expectations of anything massive coming out of uh, uh, this visit. Uh, there's a lot of uh, despair in the West Bank and elsewhere that, uh, you know, things are never going to change and they've been this way for, for decades and uh, uh, the, 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 the mood music just isn't right for any change and they're expecting the same raids to continue by the Israelis and the same reprisals by by the Palestinians, so it, it, it's looking uh, pretty grim. I, I ran, on the way back, I ran down a sort of checklist, Charles, of what uh, uh, Blinken might achieve. And first of all, to, to cool things down a bit on both sides, it's not a week yet since uh, the attack in Janine and then the attack on the synagogue, which, which followed. Uh, uh, but there's been no massive assault uh, since then, although there have been minor incidents in, in the West Bank and in Israel. Uh, you earlier alluded to uh, wrapping uh, Netanyahu diplomatically over the knuckles on its uh, uh, sort of downturn and its sharpening policy uh, towards the uh, Palestinians. And it came today, Charles, you mentioned it earlier in a press conference that Blinken held. And uh, he said that to both sides shouldn't do anything uh, which would derail the, uh, the, the any kind of peace settlement, including... Uh, settlers' expansion and demolition and eviction of Palestinians from from their homes. So that was, in diplomatic terms, fairly a fairly strong attack uh, by uh, Biden on uh, uh, the Netanyahu regime. Uh, and uh, there was also uh, calls for an advance on the, on the peace talks. But you know, frankly, they're not going anywhere at the moment. Now, earlier today, I spoke to a very senior. Uh, and veteran figure in the PLO movement, uh, Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, about his assessment of the value of the Blinken visit. And this is what he had to say. I don't think he's able to achieve anything. Uh, unfortunately, the main pressure is going in the direction of the weaker part here, which is the Palestinians. And uh, Mr. Blinken and his administration cannot play a positive, constructive role as long as the United States is totally biased to Israel. They have promised that they will bring pressure to suspend settlement expansion. Today we see the largest and the biggest expansion of illegal settlements, which is killing the possibility of a Palestinian state. They promised even little things they couldn't fulfill, like reopening the American consulate in Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, so far they've been following exactly what Trump did, which is encouraging what they call normalization agreements with Arab countries at the expense of the Palestinian cause. And uh, John, I'm told that after all those fits and starts that we had earlier, we're literally out of time. I'd give you 10 seconds to summarize things. Oh. Expectations weren't high, nothing really serious was achieved. The best that can be said is that ties, diplomatic ties, security ties between the Palestinians and the Israelis may, I say may, be restored in due course, but uh, nothing really changed much here after the uh, Blinken visit, Charles. Back to you. John, thank you ever so much. Uh, John Cookson, Arise Chief Correspondent, talking to me there from Jerusalem.